but what we couldn't do and what a bunch of rules and laws could not enforce enough to make us perfect. God shut sin down when he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He wasn't sinful flesh, but he came as a man. And when he gave his life on the cross, it shut down down the power of sin for everyone that would have his blood applied to their sin and if he hadn't gone a little further we would have been in the same condition as the people of the Old Testament there would have been no salvation for men but Jesus went a little further he obeyed the unwritten precept He loved me when I didn't even love myself. He believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. He called me when I wasn't callable. He loved me when I wasn't lovable. He chose me when I wasn't choosable. But he woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. He kept me in my right mind. I could have died. I could have committed suicide. But the Lord was merciful to me. The points of reference from which you have lived life. Take them all. And shove them through the filter of the word. On the other side of that filter. Only what's needed for the journey of all those perspectives and perceptions will be there waiting for you to take. And the rest of the dead weight that's been a hindrance to you, lay it down and never pick it up again. Whatever God asks you to forsake is never as good as what He is calling you to walk into. God promises that when you leave Haran, you're going to come into a new land. And when you leave the gods and when you leave the family of your fathers, I'm going to lead you to this new land. And I'm going to make you a new nation and a new people. There is great promise in what God has said. But make no mistake, make no mistake, this call into covenant is a call into mystery. You don't have to live like this. I can get back to where I belong. Can I tell you, someone here today is going to do a roundabout. Maybe you've been going in circles and you've been going, I don't know which direction. I'm telling you, it's time to come back to the Father's house. I don't care how much pressure I go under. I don't care how many times it feels like a sledgehammer is pounding me. Yet will I rejoice. Yet will I joy. Yet will I praise. Yet will I have myself a time in the presence of the Lord. When God comes upon you, it's not because he's trying to bless you. It's not because he's trying to touch you. It's not because he's trying to make you feel good. It's because he's overshadowed you. So something in that moment out of heaven can be born in your life. I can change your dilemma in about one and a half seconds. I can heal your body in about one and a half seconds. I can deliver you from the addiction in about one and a half seconds. All it takes is for you to acknowledge that the light's coming on and for you to worship me and it can happen. He said, I'll pour my spirit out upon all flesh. I'm going to meet every need. I'm going I'm to do what nobody can do. I'm going to do what the church can't do. I'm going to do what the preacher can't do. I'm going to do what nobody can do. I'm going to pour my spirit out on all flesh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet every single person at the point of their need. When they call unto me, I'm going to answer, saith the Lord. On to something more. God has more for you than simply being water baptized in his name and filled with his spirit. God wants to use you to affect somebody else in this city so that they would see Jesus in you.